jump over to our man Teddy Cakes at. Folks, you heard the ad at the break there. If you haven't checked it out yet, head on over to the front page of TFNN.com. You'll see the Tiger Forex report right there by our man Teddy Kegstad. He kicked this off a couple weeks ago. He's got new issues every week out there. He covers many of the pairs in the Forex market. He also covers that crude market. He also covers the bond market. You can use code TEDDY25, folks, okay, for this month only. It's already July 13th still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So please, go check it out. Some great information out there. If you're not trading off that info, it's not something you have the time for. Whatever the reason, cancel. Get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you decide to keep it, you lock in 25% off for the monthly price of $97. That knocks you down to $72.75, and you get to keep that rate for as long as you subscribe. And man, Teddy, what a great day to talk to you today. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. <clears throat> yeah, that CPI number sure has put a little uh, bomb off in the markets today, right? Whew. Um, where do you want to start, Teddy? We got, you know, I, the, we've been talking about the CPI a little bit, of course, 9.1%. You're going to see that everywhere on the news tonight. Um, tantalizing number for sure. Uh, but the core number was hot. Month over month was hot. We see rates right now, the 10-year back above 3%. We're at 3.02. Um, but we got a little bit of easing in those crude prices. I'm not sure if you caught the interview with Kevin Hanks, but he was talking about, you know, it is stale data that it's, it's almost the middle of July already. Um, what's your take on crude right now, maybe in CPI, or where we go from here? Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Um, well, CPI, you know, I seem to remember there was a certain person about a year ago that said that the big economic numbers, CPI being one of them, were going to be some of the biggest things that we need to watch moving forward over the next couple of years. And I think we can see that it's true, and we, it's going to be a long time before these numbers stop to be such have such an impact on the markets. So, I mean, the bonds had a nice spike high last week. They, they ended a correction. They tried to get them up, you know, again this week, and they peaked out yesterday. Anyone that read the Forex report saw that we hit that nice little target area. And I think that you're going to start to see them start to hit support. So the dollar is going to gain strength, you know. So, And I also think that the more the dollar gains strength and some of these other currencies start to get uh, – pound their new lows and stuff like that, that you're going to see oil start to not just stabilize, but start to rise again. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just talking about, I mean, from a technical level, right, if I was going to be buying or selling crude at this price level of $95, we're at $96.21 right now. Overnight, you were as low as $93.67. Um, mm. We haven't seen prices below $95 or so for a while, man. Um, right. You know, if you ever got back down to 75 I think the whole country would be cheering. Meanwhile, we've been sitting at above 100, and we were at 105 earlier this week. So, yeah, I see mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, maybe we break below that level, but it's it's a level that has found support for some time, man, mm -hmm. uh, in that crude market. It's the volatility factor, Tommy. You know, like, you can't look at crude the way it was trading, like, two or three years ago. You know, at, this, at these levels, you're going to have these major swings. Yeah, even even the market to that degree, right? We get the VIX at like 26 or 27, and it's amazing that there were some years I was looking back. I don't think we got above like 14 or something in the VIX for a whole year. Um, not not the market we're dealing with right now, for sure. Hey, how about the euro US dollar? Because that's getting a lot of attention, man. I got some friends. Uh, one of my best friends lives over in Switzerland. Um, but just talking about, I got one friend going to Rome um, shortly. He's all jazzed, man, to buy some euros at parity. What's your take on the euro, man, as we as we reach parity this morning and we're chopping basically right at around parity right now on the euro U.S. dollar? Oh, I'm a sell rally forecast in the euro for a while. The EU, the whole the whole area is collapsing economically, so it's not going to stop at all. You know, and here's the thing, too, is that, you know, I've been saying this for a long time. It's not that the dollar is so strong. These other currencies are just that weak. And with what our Fed is doing, like people think that raising rates is a good thing right now and we should that they're just trying to catch up because they're behind the curve. They don't realize that what we're doing now is we're decreasing the velocity of money at a rate that we haven't done in decades. And what people don't understand about that is if you put if you were to have all the currencies at parity, let's say even just a year ago, okay, globally, all right, is on a global trade perspective now, it's costing every country around the world about ten to twenty percent more to do business with America or even outside of America, because things are denominated in dollars. That's going to be crushing economies across the globe over the next six to 12 months. So if you think that inflation's a problem, 
wait until you start to have the collapsing of banks and central, not central banks, but the banking systems around the globe and also manufacturing as well, because it's the damage. Is, we're, we're the ones that are at the forefront of causing this damage. We're going to look back a year and a half from now and be like, oh, we should have put the brakes on that. Yeah, it's quite a move, man. I got the euro US dollar up there. I mean, I could put it on a daily. I got it up there on a weekly. It's a mm -hmm. one way trip basically over the last 14 months, man. From May, we mm -hmm. were above 122, and uh, it's almost accelerating lower, man. Um, I can this, see us at 90 cents before the year's out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, really? that's, I mean, there's no bid on that chart, man, for sure. Just even being a technical trader and, and the mm -hmm. case you make, you know, is right. As in Europe versus the U.S., man, it's a tough. I mean, what are they going to do for the central bank over there when <laughs> they're dealing with so many issues, right? And, and right. they're dealing with an economic situation with the war going on with energy. They're reliant on, on Russia for energy um, at a time when they have inflation out of control and they're supposedly supposed to tame inflation at a time when they have so many economic right. problems right now. And and this is is now one of them for sure with right. the euro yeah. just getting pummeled, man. So I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk the bonds, can we, for a second? Because quite the move, mm -hmm. of course, for the bonds. Now the conversation I heard already this morning, they got uh, whether the Fed goes up potentially 75 or even a full point. I think I saw 30 percent, close mm -hmm. to even 40 or something like that, a full point. Uh, what are you looking for the bonds? Does that change at all this morning? Does it accelerate? Where, where are you looking for the 30 year? <clears throat> I'm looking at us to start hitting new lows again. The, the, where the high that we had a week and a half ago was really nice high as far as the ultimate correction from the last swing low that started in the middle of June. Okay, so if the if the bear market is still there and in place, we hit a nice little target there a week and a half ago. Then we had a nice little reprieve. The bonds started selling off again, and then you saw what happened over the last two sessions. We had a big bounce this week, and now this number is the catalyst I think is going to propel us back to making newer move lows. If that's the case and we start to get below, I would say, like 136 in the bonds, well, then we're looking at seeing 128 in the bonds probably and then within the next two months, maybe even less than that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, just huge moves on that number this morning. It dropped two full points like that. Uh, we're mm -hmm. at 138.09. And yeah, the rates is going to be an interesting one um, as they affect everything right now going and your on. And 1% and forecast, too, if that really is something that's on the table. I mean, I made the comment long before they started the raising of rates that what they need to do is do a three quarter, a one point rate rate hike, then leave it alone, see what happens for a little while. And if you need yeah. to raise rates again, do it. But what we're doing now is not helping things. And I'm telling you, it's going to kill the velocity of money. And if I'm right on that one, we're going to have problems. You're going to be going to Walmart next year and being like, OK, well, now it's not a matter of food. It's about almost everything that's, that we buy from other countries because manufacturing plants are going to close. You know, sure. we're not going to be getting these goods. Some, it, it, there are things that not everybody buys on a daily basis, but you're going to see more and more shelf space either getting empty or it's going to be all filled with the same stuff. You know what I mean? So it's all well, for sure, man. Yeah. As a trader, it's pretty wild right now. The volatility that is just oh, everywhere. For us, it's a market. dream come true. I mean, I hate right? to say it, but we're can't thriving. overstate it. No, I know we're living yeah. it. So it seems like it's just status quo. But folks, it is a trader's dream. Check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Teddy. Thank you so much, man. Have a great one. We'll You're talk welcome, to you next Tommy. Wednesday. Okay, next thanks, man.